Welcome back everybody. This is Steve and I was scrolling around on eBay the other day and I came across this. And I think this might be the oldest Packard Bell in existence. And by existence I guess I mean the oldest manufactured Packard Bell, not like the very first one. So like be excited but not that excited. But this is definitely, if it's not the oldest one that was ever made, this is definitely the oldest one that I have ever seen. So, let's get into it. A little bit smaller outside the box, huh? Alright, so I highly recommend before you turn one of these guys on for the first time after it came through shipping that you open it up and make sure that everything is put in its proper slots and connected and not rattling around and broken on the inside. So let's get inside this thing. All right, so that was exactly what I was looking for inside. There is a very long card in here, and this is actually the uh, backplane based machine with a CPU card in it. And what I was concerned about was that the CPU card or any other long cards in here might have come out, and it did. It was up like that and needed to go down. Probably not a big deal, but could have been life or death for this machine, so definitely worth testing out. I'm gonna get this thing fully dis disassembled and then we will take a look at it. These are all the parts that came out of it. What we have is a nice back plane here that has a serial and a parallel port built into it as well as a floppy controller. And we have a Western Digital MFM controller. This is your CPU board that has some onboard memory as well as the BIOS, the keyboard controller, the speaker, this is an 8088-2, which means it's a nice fast unit. And this is a slot for an 8087 math coprocessor. And we have an ATI Graphics Solution SR, which is composite out. So I would assume that it is also CGA, but not sure yet. Still got to uh, power it on and see what's up. And then this looks like it is some kind of RAM expansion board. We've got a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Can't tell yet whether it is um, 360K or 1.2 megs and an ST225 hard disk. The ST225 was the same hard disk that came in my first XT computer. And this one is awesome because there are no bad sectors listed from the factory. So that is pretty slick. I'm gonna get it all put back together and then we are going to power it up for the first time and see what happens. So before we get this board put back in here, I want you to take a look at all these bodge wires that they have in here. And there are quite a few of them. It was pretty nice of them to hot glue these guys down. Whoo boy. I have to talk a little bit about age right now. So as I'm working on the case, taking it apart, getting everything ready for some photos for you guys, this little LED right here fell off of this little spot right here. And I have a feeling that it's because of bad solder joints, but I'm not 100% sure. And I can kind of tell how it goes on by testing it with a battery. So the outside is 3 volts and the inside is minus, negative. So it goes on like so, which makes sense, but it looks like it might have lifted the traces off of the board. So we'll have to trace that out and figure that out. Because there's no, uh, there's no solder underneath. There's no solder on the on the underside of the LED. Just those little brown spots. There's only little brown spots there. So let's see if there's any connecting material there still. And what I'm gonna do is find a nice ground, which would be the case itself. And nothing there. And let's check these wires right next door, because these wires right next door are probably the ones that actually light that up. Interesting, they put the, the screw to screw that on right in between. All right, let's get 
a little screwdriver and see if we can get that out. That's a tight fit. Yep, there's nothing, barely anything left there. So I'm getting just the edge. You guys can't even see that. Yep, so I'm getting just the edge of the circuit trace right there, but nothing on the actual landing pad itself. There's just a little bit there. We'll see if that's just enough to get the job done or if I still need more after that. So first thing I want to do is try and clean this up a little bit. And there goes the old pad. Okay, that's the notch on the LED leg. And there's not a whole lot of leg there. back to some fresh metal. Hold that like that, check the inside of the case real quick. Okay, so the inside of the case is pretty wide open. So let's see what we can do with this. That's barely on there, because there's barely anything to connect it to. Right, now let's test it again. That's good, and that's good. Excellent. All right, as you saw, it had that ATI graphics card in there. That ATI graphics card had a composite output, so we've got it pointed at the modern TV for the composite input and the first boot, and then we'll get back over to the bench with a different video card and do some more exploration because this, as you can see, is fun. Hang on, let me get it turned on for the first time. Oh, we got video, but you can't see any of it. Hang on focusing tricks. Well, focusing tricks. Still can't really tell. This looks more like CGA text than EGA text. All right, we did 640K of RAM and now we're doing a complete second RAM test. So we don't trust our testing software. We got to test it twice. All right, 640K of memory. The floppy drive has been tested. Looking for boot. Fast open. Changing code pages, oh, DOS 4.01, my favorite. I've got a whole video on DOS 4.01. I'll link it up there somewhere. But uh, we are into DOS shell. And there's no color. Let's see if we can change colors. I don't know if we can. Nope, just shades of different colors of gray. All right, but she boots. So let's rearrange all this stuff over to the desk with a different video card and see if we can get it booted up that way. But I am impressed that the thing boots. Okay, folks, we are over on the desktop here and we're doing a little bit of screen capture. And what I wanna do is show you how long it takes this machine to boot up. And for some reason, this machine always starts up in slow mode. So start your timers now. And just so we're not totally bored sitting here staring at this thing, I installed a Trident VGA card in here to assist with the video capture and removed the ATI Graphics Solution SR board. Maybe one of these days I'll get a uh, CGA or MDA capture device and we'll be able to do that. So for some reason, this thing test RAM twice. We just did the floppy drive seek. Now we are checking out the hard disk. 
It installs FastOpen, sets the code page, tells you what version of DAWs 4.01, my favorite version. And we go into DAWs Shell. And there's not really a heck of a lot going on here in terms of like, welcome to this computer and here's all the programs that are on it. So let's take a look around and see what we have. So first off, DOS shell, DOS 4.0, DOS shell will let you look at the command prompt, It'll let you look at the file system. We can change the colors from this set of ugly colors to this set of ugly colors to this set of ugly colors to this set of ugly colors and then back to the beginning set of ugly colors so we will accept the beginning set of ugly colors and then you can do DOS utilities set the date and time disk copy disk compare backup fix disk restore fix disk or format we're not going to do any of those instead what we're going to do is we're going to reboot the machine And technically there's really like no shutdown command you need to do. You should park the hard disk, but this machine doesn't have a hard disk park utility. I'm gonna boot it up and at the first opportunity to set the speed to high speed, high speed, we're gonna make it high speed. Not yet. And it's complaining because I pushed a key and it wants me to press a key. There we go. Two beeps means high speed. And you can see that's a little bit faster. And if we go into the change colors tool, you can see that it cycles through the colors a little bit faster. We'll do some more testing on this in the future. Back to normal. So that was a lot faster. Let's look at the file system. Okay, so this machine, I've already put some stuff on here to play with, which is in the TO folder. I know that's kind of shocking, but it came with this temp folder on it. And in the temp folder was most of Check It, but not enough of Check It to do anything. And then this on batch file and this off batch file. Let's see if there is a menu option to view the file contents. There is, but it isn't selected. All right, now we've got the file selected. Come back up to the menu, and now we can view the file contents. Okay, so this is the on batch file. And this does at echo off and then puts at in front of all of the commands after that, which would not really be necessary because the at echo off hides all the commands. At is a way to run a command in DOS and not show the command on screen. So if this was a regular batch file and it started off with echo off, you would see the words echo off on the screen, but you put at in front of echo off and you don't see echo off. So at echo off would then not show you the CLS command. Okay, so then we clear the screen, we make a temp directory, we copy star dot star from whatever our source media is to C colon backslash temp. And then we switch to the C drive and then we copy the off bat file, which is going to complain because there isn't one. And then we change into the temp directory. And then we run check it, which doesn't exist. So this batch file would not get you very far. Let's look at the off batch file. And this is super clunky. I wonder if this was any better with a mouse. But this machine did not come with a mouse. It has a 25 pin serial port, so it would need to have an adapter. But either way, clicking on a file and then clicking on the menu and then clicking on view is not as fast as we do now where you just click on the file and press the space bar. Okay, so this is the off batch file. Echo off, clear the screen, change to the temp folder, delete everything, and accept input from the confirm.dat file. When you run delete star.star, .star, it's going to stop and ask you, are you sure? Yes or no? And so the confirm.dat file should have a Y in it cd backslash remove directory temp and then delete the off bat file let's see if the off bat file is still in the root of c and it is not okay so let's go down to temp again and there is a confirm.dat file
Let's see what that looks like. It should just be the letter yes. And yes, it is the letter yes. The letter yes. The letter Y. Okay. And what else do we have in this folder? We have MS Herc, which sets the screen to be monochrome for, I think that's for check it. Let's run it and see what happens. No Hercules video card present, so we're not going to install the Hercules video card routines. Perfect. And that's actually much safer than most DOS programs. Okay, and we have this SI, and I believe that this is going to be Norton Sysinfo. Let's see if I'm right. All right, BIOS copyright 8485, running DOS 4.0. Built-in BIOS is dated January 2nd, 1988. It's running an 8088 processor. No coprocessor, one serial port, one parallel port, VGA. Current video mode is text 80 by 25 color. There are three drives available, and that's technically, technically true and technically false at the same time. There's an A drive, and the way DOS works, if there's only a single floppy drive, it will act as the A drive and the B drive, so you can copy files from one disk to another using the same disk drive. So you say copy a colon backslash file space b colon backslash file, and it will tell you to switch disks and then switch back and then switch disks and then switch back. And then there is of course the hard disk that we're looking at right now. DOS reports 640K of memory, 90K in use by DOS and resident files, 550K available for applications. We find 640K of memory, and 32K of display memory, which is the, I guess the original memory that you'd find on a IBM XT, but this actually has one megabyte of video memory. It's funny, it's got more video memory than it has main memory. Computing index relative to an IBM XT is 1.7. That's because we're in the high speed mode. We'll run it again in low speed. Disk index is not computed because we didn't tell it. And performance index is not computed because we didn't tell it. So let's go back to the file system and we'll slow it down and we'll run it again. So I've hit the control alt minus to slow it down. And even the beeps are slower. All right, let's run this program in slow mode. And we were 1.7, what are we now? 1.0, excellent. Press enter to return and it's got a, well, let's speed it up again. All right, we're back into high speed mode. Let's press enter to return to the file system. And then I am going to do a command prompt, which drops me in that directory. Let's do SIC colon and see what it does for the disk index and the performance index. We have 1.7 again, so it's reliable. Now we're testing the C drive. And we got 1.6 and 1.6. Slower down. Let's see what happens. Back to 1.0, testing the hard disk again. 1.6 and performance index is 1.2. So the disk index didn't change, which is fantastic. That means that the disk performs at the same speed regardless and the disk performs slower than the processor does. And then the performance index changed because we went from 1.7 down to 1.0. Let's back to high speed mode, double beeps, back into DOS shell. Let's see what else is on this machine. All right, that's the temp folder that was there. And then it has a DOS folder and I have a video going over all of the different tools in DOS 4.0. I will link that up at the top and this is probably a intermediate file from doing some pipe work or something, and I did it again. What do we got? R run in DBF, some folders, some file system information. Okay.
code pages, backup, check disk, country, DOS shell, bat, display, disk copy, disk com. Just looking for anything out of the ordinary, anything different that doesn't really belong in this folder. File sys.exe, what is this? No entries found. Okay, that was useful. Select it, F10, and view it. MS Runtime Library. PSRW. Microsoft PSRW3. MS-DOS version 4.0. Okay. So it appears to be something that came with MS-DOS 4. Nothing out of the ordinary. Looks like it might want a drive letter. So let's do shift F9. Type in file sys, same response. No entries found, okay. Anything else here? Hi, mem. LCD link mem mode more. Smart Drive. All right. Well, so why did they use Fast Open instead of using Smart Drive? All right, that's the end of DOS. Let's see what's in these other folders. DBase 3, nothing. DOS, nothing. DBase 3 folder, nothing. I was hoping to find some old DBase stuff. I used to do some programming in DBase 3 way back when. That was fun. Fox Pro was better. All right, what do we have here? We have RR, config, RR executable, RR HFC, I don't know what that is, RR overlay, RR print config, RR setup, R run in, R run out, R run time. All right, let's do RR and see what this comes up as. And if there's any personal data here, we'll just skip over this section. Because we don't do that. Concentric data systems, relational report writer. Excellent. R&R. &R. Okay, so it's R&R. &R. R and R is licensed for use by one person at a time to order additional copies. Call this wonderful phone number that's probably not in service anymore, so don't call it. Version 2B, serial number 29326, F1 for help, escape to DOS, any other key to continue. And we've got run in and run out, retrieve, no reports to find, save, create, name, erase, library, select, enter library name, nope, it's looking for RP1 files and there weren't any RP1 files. Run out, retrieve, no reports to find, create, F10 to insert a field. Slash for command menu, query. Nice. You think there'd be like a preview?
end the R and R session. Yes, I'd like to end the R and R session. Let's go back to DOS shell. And the the R and R unin and the R and R unout are very small files. There's probably not any data in them to begin with. F10 file view. F10 FB. Yeah, so those are just field names. Nothing there. F10 file view. Cannot open job file dot DBF. Yep, and those are also just field names. So this machine appears to have either already been scrubbed incompletely or didn't really have a whole heck of a lot of anything on it in the first place. So let's go and look in my folder for some of the stuff that I brought over to play with real quick. If I can get there, there it is. All right, I put check it on here so we can take a look at the machine configuration. So let's run check it. Oh, it's in black and white mode. We're going to have to fix that. Setup, color. Okay, much better. Can't be having a color display adapter and not be using color. All right, sysinfo configuration, DOS version 4.01. That's correct. Phoenix BIOS. BIOS date is 1288. 8088 XT machine, no math coprocessor, 640K of RAM. VGA, video adapters at A1000, 21 meg hard disk, rip roaring, large amount of disk space there, and serial port and parallel port. So this agrees with what Norton Sys information said, and I would expect that to happen. Memory map, let's see what we got. All right, interrupt vectors, programs, VGA video RAM. It's telling me there's 128K, so the rest of it's paged somewhere else. 32K of video ROM, 8K of disk ROM, 168K of nothing. Let's see what the video ROM says. Trident, like we expected. System ROM is Phoenix. And January 2nd, 1988, like we expected. Okay, that's all good. Let's do benchmarks, main system. And we're still in high speed mode, which in this case is an eight megahertz processor speed 560 dry stones and 11.1k whetstones so let's save that and we'll call it high speed and then we'll go back and we will run it again I just slowed it down, but the beep didn't sound the same. And we're at 4.78 megahertz, so half, well, more than half. 337, that's already down. Six point five K whetstone. So comparing it to an IBM XT, we're slightly faster on both the raw CPU speed and the math speed. Let's compare it to our saved version and our high speed. You can see that the math was faster by half, 0.58, and the CPU was faster by 0.60. It's not too bad. Let's do the video system benchmark and see what that says. And we're still at slow speed. 806 characters per second and 4,661. So let's save this as low speed. Let's save for compare. Low speed. Let's go back out and speed it up. Run the test again. 1389, that's already faster. And 7690, that's already faster. All right, let's compare that to saved. Oh, it was already compared to saved. 
nope, sorry, I read the screen wrong. So 1.72 times faster than low speed on BIOS video and 1.65 times faster than low speed on direct to video RAM writing. Excellent. So we're on high speed still. Let's do the C drive test. All right, then let's save that. And let's save this to high speed. And let's go back out and run it again. All right, so we're beating out the IBM XT by 1.57 times. Let's compare the speed. So yeah, same same thing. The hard disk speed is not CPU dependent. That is excellent. All right. What other kind of trouble can we get into with this thing? So way back when, it was fun to send around this landmark speed test. And the one that I got was always named SPED for some reason. I don't know why. And we're in high speed mode now. And we're at 7.826 megahertz by landmarks calculations. We got that loud beeping in the background. Let's turn that off. So this is a... This is a Intel 8088, as we know, running at 7.826 megahertz, and it compares to a 3 megahertz 286. There's no FPU, and video is at 756 characters per second. Let's slow it down. 1.9 megahertz. And let's retest. All right, 1.9 megahertz and 527 characters per second. So you can see there's a little bit of a slowdown, and it says the clock speed is 4.655 megahertz. So definitely a change. All right, and now, will it run Planet X3? Will it run Planet X3 on DOS 4 inside of DOS Shell? And what sound do we have in here? We have no sound, so we pick PC speaker. Excellent, and have a nice DOS yourself. Well, there you go. That's the exploration of what's on the hard disk on this machine. Whew, just another day here, another rainy day here in TO land. We just took a look at the Packard Bell PB88 machine. Fantastic little beast. I'm looking at it over there. Fantastic little beast it was. Everything seemed to work great with it. It's a rock solid case design. I like the way that is all set up. It's got a backplane motherboard in it. Maybe we can test this out with other backplane cards if we come across those in the future. But uh, I think it's a fantastic little machine. What do you want to see happen on this next? Was there a favorite application or a favorite game that you had played back in the day that you want to see again? I've got a lot of stuff coming up that I'm going to keep doing with this machine and with some of the other old machines that I have. Don't know when I'll get to it, but I will get to it soon, so make sure that you are subscribed. If you like stuff like this, click the like button down below, and check in the description for some information on the website with all of the computer benchmarks that I'm going to be publishing as we go through this journey together of looking at different old computers. Was this the oldest Packard Bell computer ever made? Leave a comment down below and let me know what age, what model, what year your Packard Bell computer was, because I'm sure that we've all had at least one of these machines. Technically, this is my first, but I have worked on a lot of Packard Bell machines back when I was doing that kind of thing. So I'd look forward to hearing from your perspective, and thanks for being awesome.